you know, many of us, we're moving along happily in our lives, we're feeling good, we're doing good, and then something gets our attention. Often it's health related. I've got Mike Rolowitz from Berkshire Hathaway Home Services here with us today to talk about his career in business, his, his wake up watershed moment, and how that's changed his life. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks, Wally. Thanks for having me. So prior to being a successful real estate professional, you were actually a successful professional in staffing. Correct. Tell me about that business. Yeah. So owned a staffing firm that I founded with one of the original 10 Jaguar players, Greg Huntington, back in 1995. Did everything wrong. Like start a business for dummies. We did the opposite. We knew no one. We didn't know the industry. We didn't know we were coming to Accu Staff's backyard. But just through grit, perseverance, and really rode Greg's coattails pretty hard early on, built that over a course of years, Business Journal 50, fast growing company three times. Um, and really from 95 to probably 2007, eight, things were going awesome. Then the economy crashes, we fly under a lucky star, start doing work with the FDIC, on banks that are failing, payrolling, just totally different line of business. That goes away, pivot back to staffing, and then that watershed moment, I get the diagnosis of stage three base of tongue cancer in March of 2016. And how did that experience, the struggle, frankly, for survival, mm -hmm. how did that impact your focus on business and how has that moved you forward? What it made me realize is I was, the passion was starting to fade a little bit even before that. And as you're going through radiation and chemo and a subsequent surgery, you get a lot of time. And you're suffering and just you're pondering and you're thinking. And I realized, boy, I'm really kind of living this Groundhog Day existence. Comfortable, yes. Making a great living, yes. But like the challenge wasn't there. And I was missing the three foot conversations. I was missing this. Um, we had grown to a point where we're not dealing a lot directly with the hiring managers. We're dealing with a procurement department or something where there were just we were getting too far away from the deal itself and that's what i really enjoy so the attraction to real estate was getting back to that knee to knee level of business i'm here to help you you're important to me i'm going to guide you through this time yeah absolutely and i was i used real estate metaphors my entire staffing career i'm like you got to hire wally he's the great house in the cul-de-sac in the best school district to get people to kind of understand and also right. letting them know as a staffing professional, could companies hire on their own? Absolutely. Can people sell their homes on their own? Absolutely. Is it always the best route? Usually not. It is typically better to have a professional guiding you or a lot of the companies we worked with might have been smaller, might not have had a formal HR recruiting department. Right. So somebody's giving a little bit of their time to a really important decision for their company. And that's, I kind of equate that to real estate. For most people, this is the largest asset they have. And I want to be there, and my, my website's pvhomeguide.com. I view myself as a guide in the process. Let me point out the class five rapids we're about to go over at inspections, for example. And let me level set your expectations. Right. So that's what really kind of drove me was just, I, I had built a successful business that ran really well without me. So figured there's no better time. And now to launch this second career. So my observation has been successful people tend to be successful in, in multiple areas of their lives. You were successful as a staffing business owner. You were successful in beating down the cancer. You've been very successful in your real estate career. How have you taken that mindset of success and rolled that in your philanthropic adventures, specifically with Angelwood? I just, I love connecting people. And when I was approached for Angelwood through, um, oddly enough, my life insurance agent, who good thing she was around, Robin Wabi. So she invited us to Angelwood's fashion show years ago and said, hey, if you sponsor a table, you can sponsor a model in this fashion show. And I've, at the time, I've got like an 11-year-old daughter. I'm like, oh, I can win dad points here. So Lindsay, this is great. You're going to get to walk in this fashion show. And I'm there and I'm like, this is so awesome. And it was all about me, all about her. And then they start having some of their clients on the runway and instantly <laughs> I'm like, whoops, not about us at all. Not about the free meal. This is really about what Angel Wood's doing in our community, serving really a, people that would be considered the least of these. These are people with some pretty debilitating uh, physical, mental disabilities that they're living with, the impact on the family. And you realize yeah. the work that they do 
I figured, okay, how do I get involved? So baby steps, it was all help fundraise for the gala. And now I sit on the board <laughs> and I'm on the host committee for the gala. So they've, it's, it's, it's grown uh, and they just do such incredible work in the community. The reason for my smile and my laughing through it, <laughs> I had exactly the same experience with Best Buddies. Right. I, I was asked to sponsor a table. Sure, I'll go do that. Met some people, go do that. And within two or three years, suddenly it, it clicked for me a, a couple of years ago. I now chair the advisory board locally. I'm actually leaving in the morning mm -hmm. the National Leadership Conference. And, and it's so exciting when you allow yourself a little bit of vulnerability, which starts out as selfish dad points or selfish business points, mm -hmm. and then you connect with the people and the purpose, and it, it's, it's life-changing. It's a wonderful thing. So oh, yeah. That, that's, that's why I sit over here chuckling. I'm like, yep, rode that same ride. I yeah. love it. I yeah. love it. I can uh, two years ago at the gala, um, kind of doing a tribute to Brian Kelly, one of our outgoing directors, emeritus, and I'm kind of reading what I'm going to say about him. I'm like, oh, okay, so there's a pattern to this. Like, he got invited to an event. They did this. And 20 years later, he's leaving his board. Yeah, it's president. like multi-level marketing. In a yeah, where you're like, okay, they got their claws into me. But, you know, it's it's time well invested, I think, for the work that they're doing locally. Well, Mike, for folks who'd like to get involved, more involved with Angelwood, mm -hmm. learn more about you individually, or buying and selling houses in Ponte Vedra, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Okay. So best bet is for Angelwood. It's angelwoodjacks.org. We've got our annual fundraiser coming up August 24th at the Sawgrass Marriott. And my website is pvhomeguide.com and my cell is 904-477-5735. I want to thank Mike for being with us today. And it's a reminder, find something great to do in the community. You'll meet wonderful people, you'll make great friends, and uh, put a smile on a lot of people's faces. Have a beautiful day.